hard book to read. Is it everything that you have read in the last book? Where is Prof Roy? I don't know. I think he should be here by now. I think the traffic now is very bad. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think yes. we should start eating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The food is getting cold. Yeah, yeah I agree. The, the food is very delicious. Yeah? I hope we don't talk really serious. Yeah. I think <laughs> we have to enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow! wow. You're coming now. I apologize for my tardiness. Because of the traffic outside, it's very unpredictable. So, very nice lunch here we have here. Yeah. Thank you very much for accepting me here. So, uh, what about the book that I asked you to read uh, last week? Did you read it all? Which book, Prof? The book by Justin Fox about the myth of rational markets. Did you have all have the time to read it? Oh my oh god! My god. <laughs> I thought you had my plan. Prof, I found the book is very delicate. It's really difficult to understand. Really? I thought the book was quite uh, educating for finance and uh, economics uh, in, in, in chronological uh, time. Yeah, let me uh, put you through. I think that the book was introducing about economic theories. Yeah. So, uh, Nati, uh, did you read about the book? Oh my god, it is a hard book to read. Really? Because uh, I read the whole book and I don't understand about the content of the books. Uh, but actually, the Justin Fox thinking behind rational market into perspective, where he examines the vast array of finance and economic theories behind this school of thought. Right there, yes, the books actually uh, introduced us about the theories behind our uh, economics uh, until now. So it started with Ivan Fisher, I guess, uh, bringing the theories of Adam Smith to the stock market by predicting price uh, by measuring the. Uh, previous prices of stock markets and its expansion because of the uh, non-intervention by the government and basically price movement can be predicted but I thought that was not correct, quite correct because at, at the end uh, Fisher found that in 1929 there was a stock crash causing the Great Depression and uh, therefore this theory was uh, forgotten actually so here we go to decide what do you think about this Arif, about the book Yes, I agree with you, Prof. But also talk about Paul Samuelson that mentioned about random walk. I think random walk is about a uh, well-functioning market uh, where the, the market movement, if we plot into the curve, it will, it will be uh, under the bell curve. So, uh, you talk about the bell curve. I see your point there. So, what do you think about the bell curve? Is this like an actual bell? Yes, Prof. It is literally like bell curve, where all the price uh, distribute under the bell curve. I see the bell curve. And um, who else did you find in the book interesting, uh, according to you, uh, explaining the bell curve and, and others? I think the book also talked about Paul Newman and Morgenstern that uh, explained about be rational behavior decision. Because according to Paul Newman and Morgenstern, uh, the behavior, rational behavior decision uh, using uh, the utility curve which means that the people will, will make decision uh, rational decision according to that, uh, their preference so you talk about the bell curve and also uh, about the school of thought behind it which school of thought actually did you find uh, more interesting than that? yes I also read about Chikaguan uh, where the scholar coming from the Chicago University they are really different with their counterparts, which are Harvard, MIT, Stanford, and Berkeley. And Sikagoan is really anti with government intervention. They really believe that the market efficiency will be achieved uh, if there is no government intervention. So, I'm enjoying this discussion actually. Uh, what do you think about this book, Rahmat? Yeah, the book is confusing, but I think uh, everyone's come up with their own idea, their own theory and they have their own view how to predict the market but I think no one of them very certain. 
in, in Benjamin Graham believe market is not always follow the right price and he think market is unpredictable and Michael Johnson very interesting because uh, his view uh, investor is like orangutan where they make prediction by flipping coins but Warren Buffett said that among 40 orangutan who flips the coin they are become rich yes that's correct so I think he, he tried to prove that even if you use coin but if you can you have enough data point then you can predict the pattern of the market so very interesting, very interesting. So, uh, coming to this side of the table, we see Pak Pras here. So, what do you find about the book? I found the book interesting. Uh, it talked about a theory that at the beginning of the book is seem convincing, but at the second half of the book, uh, some scholars and professionals can prove that the theory is actually uh, less convincing, or at least lack of convincing evidence. Oh. What do you think about the book, actually? Uh, so who made these assumptions that uh, not convincing to you? I found that Kahneman and Tversky argument is quite interesting. They argue that people are not uh, rational all the time because they don't have um, unlimited time and brain power. So they use a shortcut and follow rule of thumb uh, to solve their problem. And this approach is prone to the law of small number. Human don't optimize, they say, but satisfies. I see from your point that uh, the conclusions are very confusing at the end yes. point. So, uh, so in your own words, well, what do you think uh, is the solution for this here? The market can't be rational. Rational trader never actually traded because they all agreed that what what price should be. So, on conclusion, uh, rational market cannot be. Yes. 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 I see your point. So, if I may ask, uh, are there any additional notes that you have made from this book? Bro, I just found the book very interesting. That in general, I found them also a new similarity between supporters and critics of division market theory. The idea. It was very difficult to beat the market had never even been questioned bro. but the proponents of the vision market must abandon their belief that the market got price really right. It also never been a problem that the price might be wrong bro. but efficient market theory state that the market will fix the price very quickly. Are there any additional... Yes, uh, Rosenberg mentioned about uh, portfolio based on options, uh, but he also... Uh, mentioned about all the theory, it's, even if it's all the theories there, the crash is still happened in 1998. Joe, the market is very difficult to predict and very interesting. Uh, I think it's Larry Summer. Okay. Uh, Larry Summer mentioned about all of the theories is stupid because in his view, they don't consider the human factors. Human factor is you know, some people are greedy, aggressive, conservative, which mm. which can change all of the theory. Interesting. So you will all get 10 points additionally to what you have done here. Very good. Good. So this is a test? Yes, it is. It is. So, wow. so do, you have any more, do you have any more points? In conclusion, to add to your points you've made, uh, that you have to manage your expectations when investing and uh, the market is too big, the information is too wide to take mm -hmm. it into the whole. So at the end of the day, you have to be a good judge upon the decisions you make. Okay. So based on the human factors and uh, everything that isn't there to predict and to, fo uh, to measure. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's, that's the conclusion I can, get, I can give you in addition to what you find. Great. Wow, great. So we learn a lot by reading only one book. We can understand all the evolution of the thinking in economic, finance, as mm -hmm. well as rewards and race. So thank you, Prof. I think you have already given us a good book. Thank, thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank, thank you, so you for much. coming. But none of us bring the wallet. Would you please pay the bills? Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof, from the lab for the lunch. Hey, guys, I forgot my wallet too. Come back! <laughs>